my brothers and sisters in Christ. As I was saying before in our gospel reading today, we are presented with a beautiful uh, scene of uh, the wedding feast of Cana. Um, it's a beautiful scene for the first, from the first days of Jesus' public ministry that we know very well. It is still the beginning of his public life, and as you uh, recall, last week in our gospel reading, we hear how Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. And I think it is very interesting that the uh, kind of the first public event that Jesus attends after his baptism is a wedding. Uh, first of all, as I said before, it helps to uh, especially reflect on the institution of marriage, how Jesus elevated the uh, kind of the civil ceremony of marriage into one of the sacraments of the church with his presence there. But it's also interesting because uh, it talks to us about how marriage is part of God's plan for our world, for our society. When we are reading uh, sacred scriptures, we always have to remember that the history of salvation is a family story. It is the story of God creating from out of all the peoples of the earth one single family. The family of God, his Catholic Church. So that's why we heard in our first reading this morning, the beautiful passage from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet tells us that when the Messiah comes, he will show us that God loves his people like a bridegroom loves his bride. For the Lord delights in you as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride. And that's also why Jesus begins his public ministry attending a wedding. This wedding is a sign that Jesus is the Messiah that God promised to send to his people. As we all know, every wedding is the beginning of a family. Husband and wife become mother and father. So this wedding at Cana is the beginning of the church, the beginning of the family of God. And isn't it interesting that the mother of Jesus is also there, a blessed Virgin Mary? Because Mary is not only the mother of Jesus, she is indeed the mother of Jesus. But she's also the mother of all the children of God. She is our mother. And in the family of God in the church, Mary is always there to help her children, to help each one of us. You see, it's a family story. God who loves us, Jesus, Mary, and the apostles that are present at that wedding feast of Cana. And you, you, we just think for a moment of what Mary, our blessed mother, the mother, mother of God and our mother did at that wedding feast of Cana. We will understand better how important it is for each one of us to have a special devotion to Mary, our blessed mother. We know what happened. Uh, she realized that there was no more wine. So she comes to Jesus to ask for his help. He kind of said, what are you talking about? It's not my business. It's not my hour yet. Beautiful dialogue between our Blessed Mother and 
their son Jesus. And uh, even if he was not too interested in uh, listening to her, we know how mothers are. They know better. So she really didn't listen to him too much. And she just tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. My brothers and sisters, those are beautiful words. And these are the last words that Mary speaks in sacred scripture. And they're a beautiful and important lesson to each one of us. Do whatever he tells you. In the same way that our mothers teach us how to walk, our Heavenly Mother, Mary, is teaching us how to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, how to live as children of God. Do whatever he tells you. This is how we are supposed to live as children of God. We always have to be thinking about Jesus, reflecting on the images of Jesus that we find in the gospel. We have to listen to his words and follow his example. Jesus is always our older brother, showing us the way to live and the path to follow. He's the one who shows us how to be pleasing to God our Father. So Mary, our blessed mother, she's our mother, and she's giving us, as all mothers do, a very good advice. Do whatever he tells you. And then, I'm sure that you know, and you remember, and you notice what happened in the passage of the gospel. What happens next? The servants listen to Mary. They do what Jesus tells them to do. They fill those huge containers up to the top with water. And then it becomes the best of wines. My brothers and sisters, if we live by faith in Jesus, if we listen to him, if we follow his example, he will transform the water of our ordinary lives. All our daily works and struggles into the best of wines. If we try to always do our best for Jesus, he will do the rest. This is what also St. Paul tells us in the second reading of today's Mass. God gives each of us a portion of his Holy Spirit. He gives us, each of us, spiritual gifts to serve one another. So if we do what he tell, tell, tells us, if we use these gifts to carry out our daily duties with the spirit of love for God and love for our neighbor, then God will work miracles in our lives every day. The simplicity of our daily life will become a beautiful miracle in the eyes of God and in our service to one another. You see, we are the family of God. Mary is always there to help us in our needs. Jesus is uh, bringing us his example and the words that we need to follow in order to have a wonderful life. So let's pray today for the grace we need to practice our faith in our daily life, and especially in moments of trial and need. Let's ask during this year of faith, as the apostle, apostles did, let's ask Jesus to increase our faith. Lord, increase my faith. It also so try this year of faith to turn to Mary more and more. To really believe in Jesus and believe in Mary. In, in heaven, Mary, our blessed mother, is still watching out for her children. She still intercedes for 
each one of us. She's still telling Jesus all the time, they have no wine. And Jesus, my brothers and sisters, has no choice but to help us and give us the grace that we need in order to have a wonderful life. So let's turn to our Heavenly Mother right now. Let's, let us ask her to help us obtain the grace we need to really do whatever her son Jesus tells us to do. Especially pray to her for our country. Let she intercede for our country as we start uh, a new time in the uh, life of our country with the uh, inauguration of the president. Let us also ask for uh, the grace of peace and justice in our world. When we see so much violence all over the world, Mary, Queen of Peace, will intercede that there will be peace in our hearts, in our families, in our country. Let us also ask her for the institution of marriage in our society and in the church, that all the trials and difficulties of any marriage will be assisted by the help of the grace of God and that we will have happy marriages in our society. Let us ask her for her intercession that Jesus may turn the water of our everyday life into fine wine for his kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.